order for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, I all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, heavenly, heavenly King, King, Almighty God, God and Father, Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ almighty Son of the Father, Lord of God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness through your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pot and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill us, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. With hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaint. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites, the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky <coughs> as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For <coughs> well, they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Let us join reading in unison Psalm 78, as you will find printed in the inserts in your bulletin. So he commanded the clouds above and over the doors of heaven. He rang out back upon the feet and gave the rain from heaven. So the Lord is waiting for the rain. He provided the rain of food and hands. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his mind. He rained out the flesh from the ground of the ice and the wind burst like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp. And round about their dwellings. So, so they ate of them for good and ill, for he gave them what they prayed.
Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament, with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body, body's growth, and building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the five thousand saw that neither Jesus nor her disciples were the, his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? But for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he, whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus, then Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. In me, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be always acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Jesus, in the very end of that passage, makes the statement, I am the bread of life. He who believes in me will never hunger. And, never, and will never thirst, for I bring down the bread to sustain you in eternal life. I think that we need to always remember when looking at some of the scripture passages that Jesus used two different definitions for death and two different definitions, therefore, for life. One of them is, of course, the obvious, the physical existence being alive as opposed to death as opposed to have fallen asleep in him. The other is the less tangible, the one more difficult always or oftentimes to discern, and that is the gift that feeds and, and grows us spiritually for us. Now, Jesus has just completed, or has just, just shortly before, uh, performed the miracle of feeding the 5,000 with the five barley loaves and the two small fish, which left an abundance of everything there, and has then gone on to the next stop across the sea to Galilee. Now the people, for the most part, had dispersed. They had gone back to their homes, but in that particular group, there were those that stayed around, the implication being from Jesus' words to them later on, that they stayed for another free lunch, that they came over to see him on the other side and said, where did you go? Why did you leave us? We were going to be there with you still where you were then and see you do these works that have fed us, have been encouraged us, have, have somehow sustained our lives in the physical sense. Jesus sees that contradiction in their thinking. Their thinking is very much the same as that of the wilderness, uh, of the feeding with by manna from heaven, in the wilderness that was the first lesson in Exodus, or from Exodus for this day, when the Israelites were complaining and moaning and groaning about not having enough to eat, and why should we have left when we had more than enough of the stuff that we needed to sustain life in Israel, or in Egypt, rather than perishing in the wilderness. And Moses takes that to God. God responds, sending down the manna and the quail that were the meat that came in the evening, and the bread that was arrived that arrived in the morning. They mistakenly believed that it was because of Moses that that happened, but it was God giving to them that which they needed to sustain their lives in the physical sense, as well as in a spiritual sense through the message proclaimed by Moses 
that it was not me, but God who gave this to you. It was God who gave you the ability to see beyond your very own physical needs. And instead of, of looking simply to fill your bellies, to see rather the promise and the gift of life that has been shared with you by that miraculous gift from God, the fruit, the fruit of angels, the bread of heaven given to them on this earth. The, the uh, congregation, for want of a better word, that were part of the feeding of the 5,000 and still remained afterwards were coming and doing the same thing. They came to get another free lunch. And it was in the same way that God, through Christ, had made possible the feeding of all of them to sustain them physically. It was the word of Christ that was given to, and was given being given to them, or that was proclaimed to them, that was the key to the life eternal, which was the greater of the two gifts. Christ goes on to say to them, you know, you missed the whole point. You confused being alive physically with being a member or a part in union with me in life eternal. I am the true bread which came from heaven. I am what I, I am that which will enable you to indeed become and remain with me forever. Now, there are multiple ways in which we can find that union with Christ. Obviously, by allowing him to fill our hearts and to guide and direct and take us along the paths he would have us to follow, promising to empower us to meet the tasks and be able to perform those, those acts, those works that he has called upon us to do and equipped us so to do. That, that is, the, is, the one, is the true life, or that is one of the sources of feeding on this bread. And we nourish that in a spiritual sense when we come together as we are this morning. We come together in the name of Christ and sharing and rejoicing in that fellowship that we have found not only with each other, but through the Christ himself, through our acceptance of him as Lord and Savior, our recognition of him as God incarnate, of the one who through his own body, his own death on a cross, would bring about our permanent and final reconciliation with God. And it is also in that time of coming together that we are enabled to deliberately seek and attest to that ongoing union with him that comes from our faith, that comes from our having heard and been converted and been incorporated into his body as the members of that body, the church. The gift that he gave to the church was one way and perhaps the most most obvious in which we can deliberately seek and in ways by, by physical action and activity go about the process of, of acknowledging and, and renewing in, that renewing that, that, that indwelling spirit in each of us that has been the gift of God from the beginning of time. One of the ways, perhaps the most obvious as I say, is the Eucharist come together and we share the body of Christ and the bread of the new covenant and as we do so in the same way in which the bread from the manna from heaven and the feeding of the 5,000 entered into and nourished the physical existence of those who had shared them so too as we can incorporate into ourselves as we ingest and digest the body of Christ and his blood that is shed for us we are nourished in spirit to be at one with him. And in that unity, in that in nourishment, in that strengthening of spirit, we find our greatest gift. But lest we think that this is a magic act that is performed by somebody standing up saying the right words, we need to remember that it is not something that is done for us. It is something that we do together. The priest, or the bishop celebrating at the table at Holy Communion is not the one performing some magic act. He is the one who has been set aside by ordination, empowered and, and enabled, and also licensed, if you will, to be the means by which the church Catholic, that is the entire body of Christ, all baptized persons everywhere in the world, have come together in that place at that time 
to share in the breaking of the bread and this receiving of the cup. It may be the voice of the priest or the bishop that you hear and associate with the acts that are being, are, that are, in which we are participating. But the priest or the bishop is simply giving voice to what we ourselves are doing together in this place at this time, uniting ourselves together with the entire body of Christ in the making of Eucharist and the recommitment of ourselves, the nourishing of our spirits through the sharing of the broken bread and the cup of salvation. That is the true gift that is given to us in that physical sense. It is that ingestion of that that we share when we are together. It is that offering of ourselves, our souls and bodies. It is the offering of the gifts, whether they be monetary for the work of the church or other kinds of gifts like the food for the well. It is the giving of ourselves over to being the means by which he is known and drawing strength from that which we share together to enable us to be those who give and attest and proclaim the good news of God in Christ. So it's not simply a matter of coming together for a good time for an hour on Sunday morning and getting a small slack, a snack. It is a matter of our coming together to join together with each other in Christ as we make Holy Eucharist to bind our, to enable, to strengthen, and to renew in us that spirit that unites us to him forever, that spirit imparted to us in baptism, that spirit that is affirmed in confirmation, that spirit is the, that is the, has the potential to be that guiding force that keeps us always and everywhere in close communion, in close unity with the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we reflect on the stories of the past, we need to resist the temptation. We need to guard against falling into the trap into which the Israelites in the, in the wilderness and the, the followers who had, and those who had followed Christ across the sea looking for more free food and see instead that what we have been given is truly the bread of life, is truly the bread of heaven, is truly the drink for which will leave us, that will leave us never thirsty and never hungry as we go ahead from this place to be his eyes, his ears, his hands, his feet, and his voice in the proclamation of the good news that we have indeed become one with him who died to give us that eternal life and who reigns in heaven awaiting our joining with him where we will be for all eternity. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as it is most justly to all my majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth world without end. Church, 
We acknowledge the baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. people are according to form 5, beginning on page 389 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for John, our own bishop. For Father Tom, our priest today. For Father Joe, our vicar. For all bishops and other ministers. And for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, our Lord our Jesus. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph, our president, William, our governor, and the United States Congress, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, our country. For all who live and work in and around this community of Spring Hill, for their safety and welfare, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor, for those working to provide the people of this land and throughout the world with vaccinations and treatments for COVID-19, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, disease, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, especially victims of COVID-19 and their loved ones. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need of healing, especially Father Joseph Davis, Christian Back, Audrey Morales, Reba Alderson, Evelyn Hill, Lo Klein, Mary Ann Weir, Ruth Henderson, John Colmore, Joan Davis, Mac Davis III, Vicki Davis, Joe Flynn, Joy McKnight, Bernice Hall, Judy Gillen, Ed Mayo, Margaret Lee, Robert Chapman, Ken Chabelle, Sam Street, Haley Harvey, Connie Archer, Ronnie Beal, and the Reverend Michael Murphy. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, I For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, I have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, I have mercy. For all health care workers, especially Jessica Farmer, Michelle Gibson O'Brien, Melissa McGee, 
Rico Foyer, Wanda Harvey, Stephen Ray Mead, and all who have committed themselves to our prayers. For our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and good health. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, God, Lord. God. We ask your guidance and protection for those serving our country in the armed forces, especially Brooks Brandenburg, Jeremy DeLong, Alex Hyde, Will Harvey, and Ryan Henderson. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially Leslie Bennett and Jerry Schmelzer, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those celebrating their wedding anniversary, especially Marty and Cheryl Klein, and Dick and Peggy Robbins, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, for the youth of the Diocese of Tennessee, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia, the Reverend Mel Melter Titus, primate, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your Church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to you, you, O Lord, our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And <clears throat> yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and have heard in thee, by what we have done and by what we have done from you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be light in your will. God in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Welcome, especially any visitors, newcomers. Please, if you are new or visiting, make yourselves known to us that you can be welcomed into the fellowship of the parish family. Uh, I have not been given any particular list of things. First of all, obviously, those of you who are consistently here know that I am not Joe Davis. <laughs> and he has had another attack of diverticulitis and is hospitalized at St. Thomas Hospital. 
uh, is expecting or hoping to be sent home sometime later today. So hopefully he will be back, I guess, Wednesday and next Sunday or whatever, however that works out. But in any event. One other thing I wanted to mention, Marty Klein had called and asked me if I would make an announcement. On August the 20th through the 22nd, the 75th Annual Layman's Conference will be taking place at the DuBose Conference Center in Mount Eagle. I will post this in uh, Faith Hall on the bulletin board. Marty's planning to go and he was looking for somebody to go and ride with him. I, I sort of wanted to go myself and I think I'm going to be working at the time. <laughs> Something strange. But anyway, there's a number you can, you can register online. But if you're interested, you can contact Marty if you need his contact information. Let me know and I'll get you in touch. Uh, Anyone, anything else? I think we have a little blessing yeah, on here. Yes, yeah, I've not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> this apparently is the day for the blessing of the food that has been collected so far for the well uh, across the street, the, the hunger program within Spring Hill. With the power of your Holy Spirit, that they who receive it and share it may see and understand the love that it reflects of Christ for each and every one of us that is reflected in these contributions gathered from among the faithful, all of which we ask for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for all. <laughs>
as we are united to each other in our Savior Christ this day in the name of the Eucharist. I bid your prayers for world peace. Continued safety of those members of our armed forces stationed at home and abroad. For the first responders around the world who put their lives on the line every day and responding to emergency calls to assist others in need. I bid your prayers also for the sick and shunned of this parish family, especially those new, known to us, and in particular on this day for Father Joe. I bid your prayers also for those members of the parish family celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, that they may enjoy this blessings of God's presence on their lives, or in their lives, this day and forever. I bid your prayers also for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed persons. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, have heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to make the Lord, O Son in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night in which he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ is will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We do not our temptations, but deliver us from evil one. For thy name is the kingdom and the power of the Lord, forever and ever. Hallelujah. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's give the priests. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Be not him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
One more thing before we get away. I want to say thanks to the Lord for blessing us today with the presence of such a large part of our heart and soul here at Grace Mama Club Fire. Yeah. We love having you here, Mama. 